Today, I want to start a conversation. And I want to continue this conversation next week. I don't want to conclude this conversation. I want it to go on. I want you to talk about it. When you go to lunch today, I want you to talk about it. When you go home, when you meet up in your groups through the week, I want you to talk about some of these things that I'm going to share with you and what they mean to you. I've entitled this message, It's My Default. It's My Default. John chapter 3, let's start reading at verse number 1. One of the greatest conversations that ever took place in Scripture. One of the greatest chapters in the Word of God. John chapter 3, verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know, pay attention to we, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Father, bless the reading of your word today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's dig into this a little bit. Here is a man, a man of the Pharisees, who comes to Jesus by night. His name is Nicodemus. Now, in just a few short verses down, you're going to get to John 3, 16. It is Nicodemus who is going to hear the most famous words that's ever been uttered in human history. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life eternal life. That wasn't said to a church. That wasn't said to a large group of people. It wasn't said to the 5,000. It was said to one man who came to Jesus at night. He belongs to the highest governing body of Jewish people. He is a Pharisee and he has elevated to be a part of the council called the Sanhedrin. Jewish leaders bound by tradition, bound by legalism. Now, in my study of Nicodemus, I I uncovered something, and I think this is interesting. I'm not going to talk about it in much detail today. I don't have time. But there is a theory among theologians of who Nicodemus was. And many of them say that he is the same man who approached Jesus later in Scripture. It's found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He approached Jesus later in scripture and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, you know what the scripture says, obey your father and uh, uh, honor your father and mother. And he said, I've done all these things since I was a youth. Jesus said, okay, go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. And this man turned and went away sorrowful because he had great riches. There is a theory that says Nicodemus was the rich young ruler. We never knew who the rich young ruler was, but could it be that Nicodemus, when you get to the end of John, when you get to the crucifixion of Jesus, there is a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. 
He is a wealthy man. He has carved out a tomb for himself and his family, for his children. He is a wealthy man along with Nicodemus who goes to Pilate and begs for the body of Jesus Christ after he had died on the cross. It is Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea who will take him off the cross and Nicodemus and Joseph will lay him in the tomb. Could it be that the same man who the Bible says in that scripture first approached Jesus by night was so tore up by what Jesus said, you must be born again, that the second time he didn't even come to him undercover. He approached him in broad daylight and said, you've got to tell me what must I do to inherit eternal life. Josephus is a Jewish historian. He lived just after Jesus ascended into heaven and he kept very accurate Jewish history. He records that Nicodemus was the richest young ruler to ever exist at that time. He says that Nicodemus went on to become broke. So much so that his daughter was out gathering scraps off the ground. Could it be that the man who was the wealthiest, the man who was the most prominent, didn't just hear the word, but was changed by the word? So much so that he gave everything away and came to a life of poverty. All that he could pick up a cross and follow Jesus. We don't know. But I think it's interesting and I think Nicodemus is interesting. Now I got to ask the question. He came to him by night. Why by night? First time. Well, he's undercover. He, he can't be caught talking with Jesus. He, he can't let some of his friends see him having a conversation with Jesus, seeking to learn, seeking to know, seeking revelation. So he comes to him under cover. But Nicodemus also came to Jesus in the night of his life. He approaches this garden. He approaches wherever Jesus was praying. And the light of the world is there. And Nicodemus is walking around in the dark. There are people in this room today. And the light of the world is available to you. But you're still living in the dark. He says. The Bible says that we know that you are a teacher. The we is important. Because the we means that he's a part of the Pharisees. It is the Pharisees that are going to go on to hold a trial and ultimately put Jesus to death. But we know something's changing in the life of Nicodemus that he wouldn't have been a part of that trial and he wouldn't have sentenced Jesus to death. So what took place that he is a part of group, a part of a group that despises Jesus, but yet he is intrigued by Jesus? Nicodemus is starting to feel a separation, a calling out of the life he's aspired to. He's achieved the title. He's achieved the wealth. He's got the status. He's got the power. He is a ruler. People admire him. People respect him. This is a theocracy which means the, the governing body is also the religious body. So he is like one of the most famous politicians walking around Jerusalem at this time. This man has it all, but yet something in him is telling him, you've got nothing. You've made it, but you haven't made it. And he realizes I'm in it, but I'm not a part of it. I'm in it, but I don't fit it. 
And I'm starting to think that maybe God is about to do a new thing. I'm starting to think that miracles didn't stop in the Old Testament. And Jesus, I've been seeing you do some stuff and it's, it's stirring up my faith and it's stirring up something on the inside of me. My mind is being stirred and you've shaken my understanding. I can't rest. I can't sleep. I can't stay home. He's coming to Jesus at night. Why? Because he can't go to sleep. Because something is messing him up and he doesn't know what it is. But he has come to conclude that maybe Jesus has the answer. I can't rest. I can't stay home. Why are some of you here today? There are people in this room right now that are determined their friends don't find out they went to church on Sunday. You don't want anyone to know you go to a church where they jump around, they dance around, they speak in tongues, they lay hands on people. You don't want your friends to know you go to a church like that, so you are here today undercover. Why didn't you stay home? Why didn't you sleep in? It's Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day outside. You should have stayed home. You should have went fishing. You should have went and done something else. Why are you here today? Because something in you is not letting you rest. Something in you is stirring saying, I'm in it, but I'm not of it. I try to fit in, but the more I fit in, the more I stand out. And I can't sleep at night. Something keeps waking me up at 3 in the morning. Something keeps waking me up at 4 in the morning. And, and I don't know what it is, but there's something stirring on the inside of me. I don't want my friends to know about it. I don't talk to my, my co-workers at lunch about it. And I wanted to stay home today, but it's like something picked me up out of the bed and took me to church. I was the one you wouldn't have, I was the one that wouldn't have been caught dead in church. Now I'm here early. Why? Why? Have you ever had God stir you up? Jesus is offering something to Nicodemus that he has never seen before. And now Nicodemus is asking one simple question. Could it be? Could it be that there's more to this life than what I've seen? Could it be that there's more to this life than what I've aspired to, than what I've, what I've worked hard to achieve because I've, I've got wealth and it doesn't satisfy and I've got position and it doesn't satisfy and I got the home and I got the car, but there's still a longing in my spirit that there must be more. He's a religious person. Oh, pay attention to that. He's a religious person. How many people I've met at City Gate Church that you found church, but you still haven't found Jesus? You have found church because your mama went to church and your grandmama took you to church and your family all went to church and so now you are doing nothing more than what they did you are going through the religious tradition of just coming to church and yet sitting here in church you're dissatisfied how can you be in a place like this and be dissatisfied how can you be in a place like this and still have a longing that there must be more because there's more than a building there's more than a service. There's a revelation that you can only find when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ and your life is changed. And Nicodemus goes, we know your teacher. We've seen the things that you do and we've determined that no man can do this unless maybe God has sent him. And he awaits, what's Jesus going to say? And what does Jesus say? Gee, I, don't, I, I know what I would have said. I would have said, you're right. Here's my card. Call me. I'm great at weddings. Well, but the first words out of Jesus' mouth, because Jesus always knows what you're really looking for. 
See, some of you have prayed prayers and God knew that wasn't the prayer you wanted answered. So he answers the prayer you didn't pray. Because that's what you really sought an answer to. And he looks at him and here's what he says. That's it. You must be born again. You, excuse me, Jesus. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? And Jesus says, you found truth, Nicodemus. And now truth is driving you to freedom. Truth is driving you to a new beginning. Truth is unlocking a realm that you didn't even know you had access to. It was right there. It was right in front of you. But you never even accessed it until truth showed up. And once you have an encounter with truth, let me just say something to you. You can reject truth. But you will never be the same after you've encountered truth. Because even if you reject truth, you know you rejected what you could have had. Truth always shows you what could be. Truth always shows you a new thing that you have access to that you never even realized you had access to it. You didn't even know the room was there. When we bought our house, we went up. We're looking at all the rooms. We, you know, we're walking through the house and we get to the room. We said, oh, this will be Sage's room. And... We, we're looking at it. It's a nice big room, and there's two closets. And I thought, well, that's nice. Two closets. Open the first closet. Nice little closet. Sage is really going to enjoy this. And I open the second closet, and I'm looking around. And at the bottom of the closet, there's a little door. And I lean down, and I open the door, and I crawled through the door, and there was a whole nother room behind this closet. See, that's what truth does. Truth gives you access to a room you didn't even know existed. Truth is where you find healing and breakthrough and deliverance. Truth is where you find generational blessing and how to pass it down to your children and your children's children's children. That's what happens when you find truth. You will never be the same again. Here's the big idea. As long as you don't know any better, you can't do any better. But once you know better... You can start to do better. And you're starting to understand on another level today. And you can't think up here and still live down here. Anybody ever made the mistake of flying first class? Anybody ever got bumped up or got, a, got an upgrade? Anybody? You sit first class one time and you will mortgage your home to never fly in the back of that plane again. Why? Because once you've lived up here, you can't live down here anymore. And that's what truth's doing to you. See, truth's elevating you before you even get there. Truth's elevating your thinking. It's elevating your faith. It's elevating your belief. It's elevating your prayer life. You are praying things today that you didn't pray a year ago because you had an encounter with truth. And now you keep trying to go back down and the moment you sit down and coach... Back starts aching, your knees start aching, and they hand you that little bottle of water and those little graham crackers, and you're like, when I was in first class. You know what I'm talking about. And so Jesus says to him, Nicodemus, Nicodemus, that which is earthly is earthly, and that which of spirit is spirit. You must be born of water. And you must be born of the Spirit. Now some have said that water was talking about baptism. That has nothing to do with baptism. Jesus is constantly making the, the comparison between natural birth, spiritual birth. You can understand natural birth, but you, you need a revelation of spiritual birth. You, you, you get it. Water. Born of water. Do, do you remember, husbands, do you remember when your wife's water broke? And you're like, you didn't say, okay, let's go shopping. Let's go pick out baby clothes and baby furniture. You had one destination. We go into the hospital. The water broke. Born of water. You understand what it means to be born in the natural. But Nicodemus, there is another birth. There is a birth that you can't get on the earth. Because earth reproduces earth. But until you are born again of the spirit or born again from above, you can't give birth to things from above. So if you want to call those things from heaven down to earth, then you can't just settle for natural birth. 
you got to have a rebirth in the spirit. And only when you are born again of the spirit do you have access to things that are in the heaven. And he said, you've accessed things on the earth because you've been born of the natural. You've been born of the earth. But if you are born again from above or born again of the spirit, then all that my father has will be available to you because you have an earthly father. But until you are born again, you don't have a heavenly father. But once you have a heavenly father, you now have access to everything that belongs to him. And now Nicodemus, he realizes, I've got too much in me to stay where I am. And that's how some of you feel today. You have too much in you to stay where you've always been. Yes, sir. This is why a lot of you leave City Gate Church. Because you're tired of people telling you what could be. You're tired of being confronted by truth that's elevating you. And what, you, what we desperately seek is to go back to default. Come on, Come on, Pastor. And what do we say? What does that person say after they cuss you out trying to get out of the parking lot of City Gate Church? <laughs> what do they say? I'm sorry, it's my default. It's my default. What's your default option? Good. See, I've learned, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a tech nerd, so I, understand, I love tech, I love computers, I love all that stuff, and I love to dig into that. And I, I've understood, every time I buy a phone or a computer or an iPad, they come with default settings. And I can go in and change the settings, but if I don't change the default, the first time I restart it, it's all going back to the way it came from the manufacturer. And you're going around and you keep trying to change your settings, but you're not dealing with your defaults. And if you don't change your default, you're always going to go back to who you've always been. Because that's where you're most comfortable. It's my default. And you can change your settings. In fact, look around you today. You know what this is? This is called the church setting. And you all know where to click the button for the church setting. And you come through the door. And after you fought with your husband, fought with your kids all the way to church, you hit that parking lot and you hit church settings. And you walk through the door. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. My children are blessed. Go on, go on, Junior. Go on to kids' church. I love you, buddy. And then all of a sudden, church is over. Pastor's still finishing the message, but you don't want to get stuck in traffic, so you jump up out of your seat and you run to those back doors. I watch you. You don't think I can see you? I'm standing up here. I'm looking that way. And you take off running for them doors, and then you get stuck in traffic, and you're yelling at people who pulled out in front of you. They pulled out in front of you at the church parking lot. You're yelling at them. You're cuss kids in the back seat, and you're like, it's, it's my default. Because you changed your settings based on where you were, but you never dealt with your defaults. That's why you go back to who you've always been. That's why you can be so good in here, but you're so jacked up out there. I'm preaching good right now. And then you get down on yourself come Thursday because you messed up. And you get down on yourself and you say, I thought I made so much progress, but then something happens and I'm right back to where I started. You're not right back to where you started. You're back to your default. Well, I know what I'll do. I'll come down front. Pastor will get some oil, slap some oil on my head. And I'll be changed. I'll be, here's the big idea. I can't pray you past your default. I can't, I can't anoint the default out of you. You missed a good line right there. I, 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 can't, I can't pray the default out of you. You have to get alone with Jesus. And you have to ask him to deal with my defaults. 
while I went to the altar, I cried. Did you see me cry today? I cried. Snot dripping out, tears, mascara. I even wore mascara just so it would run today. I mean, I cried at the altar. An emotional response does not equate to change. I've known people all my life that could cry at the drop of a hat. Cry about everything. Cry because their coffee's too hot. Cry because their coffee's too cold. I mean, just cry. Cry about anything. And just because you cried doesn't mean you changed. Anyone can work up tears and then walk right back out to their default settings. I don't have time to unpack all this, but can I just talk to you about some of your defaults? There's the hurt default. And every time somebody hurts you, you go right back to who you've always been. You go right back to that mean, angry, cussing, fussing person you've always been. Why? It was your default. Hurt just revealed it. There are the fear defaults. Every time you become afraid, you go right back to default, right back to doubting God, right back to questioning God, right back to believing all the bad reports and none of what the Bible says. It's your default. There's the married default. And when, when your when you're marriage relationship doesn't look like the fairy tale it's supposed to look like, you go right back to your single default. The only problem is you're still married, but your default is thinking single. This is why marriages fail. It's defaults. Many of you men, whenever you face challenges, you default back to childlike settings. I'll go to my basement and I'll turn on a video game so it consumes my life so I don't have to deal with my responsibilities. Because I can go into a video game and live a life that's not mine. And I'll join every sports team. And I'll play softball six nights a week. Why? I'm just trying to get away from my responsibility. You're doing the same thing you did when you was a little boy. It's your default. Childlike settings. Go through a bad time. Somebody talked to you bad at work. Your boss wasn't kind to you. So you go out and open another credit card. And max out that credit card. And open another credit card. And max out that credit card. Because you're like a child. It's your default settings. And you come down to an altar. And you pray. But your default hasn't changed. Changing clothes doesn't change a man. What you do on the outside doesn't alter what's going on on the inside. New habits don't make for a new soul. We got a lot of churches, we got a lot of preachers preaching today. Change your habits, change your life. Change your habits, change your life. You can change your habits and still go to hell. We got people in churches living right every week, but their soul hasn't changed. They haven't been born again. They don't have a new default. But if one would see the kingdom, he must be born again. So you know what Jesus is telling Nicodemus? I know you've believed up to this point. You've done well. You have memorized the Old Testament, the first five books of the Old Testament. He could quote them word for word. That was a, that was a requirement to become a Pharisee. He knew the word. He lived the word. He was religious. He kept the law. He checked off every box. But Nicodemus, you got to deal with your defaults. And your defaults right now are telling you God's not going to move in a new way. God's going to move the way he's always moved. But what you got to see is new is standing in front of you. And you're never going to have access to the new until you deal with your defaults.
And there are, there, let me, ooh, I feel this. There are promotions waiting for people in this room, but you're never going to get them until you deal with your defaults. There are breakthroughs waiting for people in this room, but you're never going to experience it until you deal with your defaults. There is generational blessings that God's going to release on people in this room, but you're never going to get it until you deal with your defaults. I, I need you to point at somebody and say, deal with your default. Deal with your default. Deal. In fact, I want you to tell them you need a new default. Because what I can do is I can go into the software, and if I like these new settings, I can go and I can click set this as my new default. And it doesn't mean I won't mess up. Oh, no, I'm going to trip and, and I'm going to get it wrong. But I ain't going back to who I used to be. I got a new default. I've been born again, not of flesh, but of the spirit. I've been born from, I've been born again from above. And now whenever the devil hits me, it might shake me for a moment, but I go to a new default. My old default was fear. My new default is faith. My old default was broken. My new default is boldness. My old default was given up. My new default was I will not give in and I will not quit. I, I got a new default. Am I preaching anybody in this room? Because once there's a new default, you can't go back to who you used to be. Yeah, you may get in the setting. You may try and go hang out with your old friends. But I promise you, once you've got a new default, you'll start looking around saying, I can't live like this. I don't even know how I lived like that back then. I got a new fault. Something's elevated in my life. Something's elevated in my thinking. I keep trying to go back to coach, but I've already sat in first class. I've been ruined. I got too close to Jesus, and Jesus reset all the defaults in my life, and I went from the earth to the kingdom of heaven. I went from the natural to the supernatural. I went from what I can see to what I can't see. And now you start living in the kingdom of God or God's way of doing things. That's the default he's trying to move you to. So whenever you're going to get hit, but instead of responding in your old default, you respond God's way of doing things. Now see, when that hit me a few years ago, whew, I'd have been laid out on the floor. I'd have been in a, in a pile. I'd have been crying myself to sleep at night. But now... I got a new default. And my default is I have authority. And if it's in heaven, I can unlock it and I can bring it down to earth. Because whatever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I got a new default. So where that would have crushed me yesterday, I'm going to take authority over it today. Because I got a new default. Yesterday I dealt with it in my flesh. That's why I was cussing. That's why I was having breakdowns. That's why I was having nervous breakdowns. But today I'm dealing with it in the spirit. And in the spirit, I'm saying, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Sickness, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Brokenness, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I take authority. I could never speak like that until you get a new default. And once you get that new default, you can never... This is what it means to be born again. Everything you're trying to go back to was first birth. But when you are born again, first birth doesn't fit you anymore. And that's why like Nicodemus, how can a man go back up into his mother's womb and be born a second time? You can't. And if you are born again of the spirit, you can't go back to living in the flesh. And that's when Jesus says, you feel the wind, but you don't know where it comes from. You don't see it. You don't know where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. They are led by the Spirit. Do you receive that word? We're just having a conversation. That's all we're doing. And we'll continue this conversation next Sunday. But here's the big question. Have you had a religious experience? Or have you been born again? 
if you can still recognize those old defaults, then I want to say to you what Jesus said to Nicodemus. You must be, you must be born again. And I can't, I can't do that. I can't give you that. Only Jesus gives you access to that. And I don't know who I'm talking to in this room, but I just feel like there's some people who are tired of their old defaults. They're tired of every time something happens, they go right back to who they used to be. But the, I'm, ta I'm talking to people in this room, and I'm talking to people who have been coming to church for a long time, but still dealing with old defaults. And you're ready for a new default. God to change all your default settings today so that the next challenge that comes you ain't going back to who you used to be you're going back to being born again you got a new default if I'm talking to you in this room and you want God right now because I can't only God can but you would be honest before God and say Lord I need you to deal with my defaults would you just ask him right now, God, begin to do a work in my defaults. I'm asking you, God, set a new default in my heart. Set a new default in my mind. If you'll ask him, he'll do it. Maybe you need to just pray this prayer, Lord, I want to be born again today. I've been in church for a long time. I've served you for a long time, but I've served you with old defaults. But I'm asking you, establish a new default in my life. Do a, brand, do a new thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. Have you not seen it? Expose us to truth. Never let us be the same. We want to be changed. So right now, if this message was for you, lift your hands to heaven, and I want you to pray with all your heart, Lord. Don't change the outside. Do a work on the inside. Search me, oh God. Know my thoughts, I pray. Know my defaults, I pray. And I'm asking you, I want to be born again. I want a new beginning. I want a fresh start. I don't care how long I've been in church. Let today be the day that all things are made new. Establish a new default because my default will become my children's default. So establish a new default in me today, not just for me, but for my children and my children's children. I just, I really feel like God's dealing with someone's heart today. I'm not calling you down to the altar. I'm not asking you to do anything out of the ordinary. I'm just saying really let God do a work in your heart right now. He's going in if you'll let him. And he's resetting all those defaults. He's resetting all those. Your old default was bitterness. Your new default is forgiveness. Your old default was broken. Your new default is made whole. Your old default was fear. Your new default is faith. Let him do the work in you right now. There are promotions about to be unlocked when he resets these defaults. I don't want to be born of just the flesh. I want to be born again of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. If you're thankful that he's established a new default in your life and you receive that word, can you put your hands together and let him know you receive that word? I, I wish somebody could film all the blessing that's about to take place in the parking lot. People cutting you off. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. Wait till you wake up tomorrow morning and you're not even thinking the way you thought when you went to bed tonight. 
wait until you go to pray and new words start coming out of your life. Wait, wait until the next battle hits your life and all of a sudden you're standing strong, taking authority over all the devil's ability. Do you receive that word? Tell Jesus, and if you're thankful you're born again, give God praise for being born again.